Meanwhile, with the emergence of pictures like Face, partly funded by BBC Films, The Full Monty, which despite being shown in comparatively few cinemas, is number five in the American box office top ten, and Mrs Brown, we've been casting an eye over the latest crop of promising British filmmakers. Faces, if you like, not the old ones, but the latest lot. 256, take one, A camera. C camera. Action! <laughs> The Venice Film Festival called it the British Renaissance, but we've all heard about how the Brits are coming before. So, given the fact that currently there's a lot of films being made in Britain by young British Action. directors, we are some of them if the industry here is in a better state than it was three years ago. There's a huge amount more possibilities now with lottery money, with the Americans back interested in British films. There just seems to be a buzz about the British film industry and, you know, successful films are also paving the way for that. Um, people are thinking British films can travel and other, you know, audiences around the world enjoy them and have a good time. Oi! There they are! Oh, shit! Oh, no! Where's the key? I gave them to you! We stole them! George! George is on the Test this time! Three years ago when I was making short films, you made a short film, it had a theatrical release, and then you'd think, OK, what do I do now as a career? But there was no cinema film to make, a lot feature length. So you went into television. Now you make a short film, or you establish yourself in television, and there's somewhere to grow, somewhere to go and make some, expand and make something bigger. It's great. It's a lot easier these days to get the money to make a film. Um, there's, it's mainly foreign money, I think, which is an American money particularly, which is in in the UK to be had and um, it's more a case of finding the right project than it is. I think if you've got a good script these days, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to get the money to get the film made. Good evening, Shoshans, tonight's special offer. All right, all right. You said city. Yeah, yeah. I want two, two, two. I want two, two, three, 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 four. Filmmaking life, which spans 10, 12 years, um, I have been waiting, aching for the moment when uh, there would be financial help from the government when there would be something like the ED levy returned or, as happened, the lottery fund, where there would be that sense of excitement and enthusiasm, where there were the filmmakers also that would, would um, take on that mantle. In other words, filmmakers that were making not just personal films, not just British films, but also extremely entertaining and universal films, films that could keep and hold an audience. Um, and suddenly, this year, it, all these things seem to have come good. All right, a number of entertaining British commercial films is seemingly released every week. But is this mini-boom sustainable? And if so, how? If you have something worth investing in, people will invest in it. And I think that there are a modern crop of filmmakers now coming up who really do have a responsibility to making entertaining, unique, entertaining commercial films. I think the British film industry's probably got about three years of um, heyday period. And if we make good films in that time, I think it'll keep going. And if we don't, then it won't. You know, I think we've got to come out with more good films. I think from Hollywood particularly, they'll just throw money into what seems like the next kind of British hit and um, it will only take two or three misses and the money will stop coming. I feel that the boom in cinema at the moment is sort of an extension of the single films we made on television. I don't think we've gone into the really big sort of film cinema in sort of European or American terms. Also, that's the budget fault because all the films that are being made in this boom are very small budgets. People have, you know, been brought up in so many different circumstances that there's so many individual stories that you've got, uh, you know, a, a lot more interesting stories coming out. There's so many more people trying to write, wanting to say something, wanting to say something about things that they know about personally. And then he'd say that I was one of these tiny creatures. I was special and wonderful. Everything I did was a miracle. When I remember this, I feel on top of the world. On our way home from Wales, we were a boxing club on the verge of our first clash. That made me feel the same way.
I really do think the money's going in the wrong end. It should be going in at the other end. I don't think that there's an enormous pile of wonderful scripts crying out to be made that aren't being made. I think good films, you know, pretty much get, good screenplays pretty much get made. But um, I think that what needs to happen is that the money needs to go into proper distribution and marketing of those films which get made and which are good and which are, are worth a, a larger audience seeing. Otherwise, they vanish without trace. It would be nice to try and get some British successes which have been funded with British money and so that that money and so the profits are going to come back you know, into the British film industry. I mean, the Full Monty is doing very well at the moment, but, um, and, you know, much to search like we're a great company to work with. All the money is going into uh, over the pond, you know, it's all going back to America, it's not coming back into the British film industry. Between now and Christmas, some 15 British films will be seeking space in the cinemas. The question, of course, is whether the multiplexes will give them a break or, as usual, treat them as art house movies to be tucked away on the smallest screen available. Then, too, will the public remember, as Mike Lee pointed out here last week, that there's more to the movies than Hollywood and start supporting their local sheriff. Time, no doubt, will tell.